souffle. A bit flash, but it has to be the perfect way of ending a Sunday lunch. Now, we're going to make a banana and passion fruit souffle. And the secret behind any souffle is in the pastry cream. It's very simple. It's just almost like a, a thick custard. 150 mils of milk and 100 cream. Put that onto the boil. Just into the pan. Three egg yolks, sugar, three and a half tablespoons. This is where you have to be very vigorous with whisking the eggs and the sugar. Into the bowl. To thicken the pastry cream, we're going to use a tablespoon of flour and half a tablespoon of corn flour. And that gives it body in on top of the eggs and sugar. Again, whisk that in. This is the secret. You take your cream and your milk and you just put a splash in there. And then you mix that through. If I had to put all the cream and the milk in there, it'll go lumpy. But what's happening now, whilst I'm whisking this in, it's staying nice and smooth. Then, get the rest of your cream and milk into there. Put the pan back on the heat. And look, this is what happens to all custards. What we do now is just cook it out. And just make sure we go in all the corners. Now look, a nice, thick, rich custard. Now the filling is passion fruit banana. Now, there you go. They look quite intimidating, don't they? They look like sort of unwanted kiwis, and they're wrinkled. That means they're nice and ripe. If you're not too sure of the wrinkles, take a close look. That's certainly ripe. Get the passion fruit and just cut them in half. And then we're going to put them through a sieve and get all that juice off the seed. The smell and the aroma coming off this passion fruit is amazing. And look, got this amazing passion fruit juice. And that is stunning. Okay, our bananas. Again, try to use really sort of nice and ripe bananas because obviously the intensity of flavour is far better. Put fresh lemon juice in there. We're going to blend it now and just put them into the liquidizer. And just blend. There. Look, a cube of ice in there, some fresh yogurt, and you've got the most amazing smoothie. That in with your pastry cream, and then mix. The nice thing about this particular base, it can be made two or three days before in the fridge, and just take it out when you need it. The most important thing about making a souffle is making sure it doesn't stick to the mould. That's simple. Your ramekins and your butter. The most important thing about the butter is to keep the butter soft. If you're not too sure how soft, just touch your skin. That's how soft it should be. Get your pastry brush. Not too much butter. Now, first thing, crucial, make sure your moulds are dry. You can't butter something that's wet. It's going to cause it to stick and therefore rise unevenly. I'm just going to get my brush and have these really nice sort of vertical strokes. And it's like sort of little tram lines. Then when the heat gets inside that mould, it's going to push the souffle up. Before that butter sets, we're going to line them with some sugar and chocolate. Some of the kids like the chocolate ones. Some of them like them sugar. Tip all the grated chocolate into the mould. All we do is just tip the mould round. And what it does, because the butter's still slightly wet, Look, it lines the inside of the souffle. Then you tip the excess chocolate into the next mould. And so you're not wasting anything. But look, you've got real nice chocolate. Now, for these ones, we're going to line with sugar. Round, twist, 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 twist. And look, there you go. A nicely lined mould of sugar. Just to get them really nice and set, Stick them in the fridge for five minutes so that butter solidifies. Okay. Now, the final part, the egg white. Egg white's in. I'm just going to get a little drop of lemon juice just to strengthen the egg white. And it makes it nice and vibrant white as well. So it keeps the colour in there. Mix it down and then on full, straight away. Now, 50 grams of sugar. Basically three and a half tablespoons of sugar. But don't add them at the same time. Sprinkle. And then count to ten. 
That allows the sugar to be evenly distributed across the bowl. Then add another spoon of sugar. And what happens now, we get a really nice, rich meringue. Now, I'm going to take one third of the meringue out and I'm going to really seriously whip it inside the pastry cream. Everyone thinks you've got to be really delicate and dainty and start folding it in, but no. That's the last thing you've got to do. Because that's what causes lumpy souffles. And this is where we start folding in the two thirds of the remaining egg white. And that's crucial. We've got to really make sure that we sort of evenly mix in the egg white. We don't want to knock all the air out of the egg white, but we've got this really nice, silky, smooth, very tasty mixture that needs to be brought together. Okay, that's ready. The moulds now. But before I start actually filling these moulds, just turn the oven up a little bit. We're going to cook them at 180, but turn the oven up to 190. Because the minute we open that oven door and put those souffles in, it drops in temperature. Get your cloth and fold it into four because we're only going to fill the mould to begin with half full. Get your mould and your ladle and look. Drop the mixture in, get the mould and just bang it at the bottom of the cloth. And what happens now? All that mixture goes right to the bottom of the mould so therefore it rises evenly. If it didn't hit all the corners it goes skew whiff left and right and that's what you don't want. Definitely not. So, once you've got all the mixture at the bottom of the mould, then just top them off. Fill it up right up to the very top. And all we do now is get your pallet knife and just with one clean sweep off. What we want to do now is create a little ridge. So you just get your thumb and you go around the mould like that because that stops the souffle from hanging over the side as it starts to rise. I'm not one for being overconfident, but I can guarantee these are going to work. Into the oven. Don't put them too close together because as they rise, I do not want them to stick. A couple of inches separating them. In the oven. Look, temperature's dropped already. Close the oven door and say a little prayer. Wow. Piece of cake. Now. Look at them, they've got that little bit of sort of bulge at the side. That's called a love handle, and that's a perfect sign of a souffle. And very quickly, just a tablespoon of icing sugar, and just tap nicely over each souffle, and then straight to the table. There you have the perfect love handle souffle.